I'm forging an iron or blade for this plane restoration project with Wood by Wright, Rex Kruger, Hand Tool Rescue, and Yuri Tuckman. This is a decorative mosaic plug that we're going to forge weld into our plane blade seen here, both of which we forged out in the last video, part one. See links in the description to find it. Now, let's cut a hole in the blade here so we can get our chocolate into that peanut butter. First, we had to mark out where we need to put our hole. Uh, the blade is currently oversized a bit and will stay that way for a while in case we get something off center a little bit. Despite the fact this was annealed, I still burned up several cheap Amazon hole saws. So in the last video you saw me turning the plug down to size, I test cut a piece of mild steel with this same hole saw and so I knew it would fit. And it fits the real piece perfectly. There's a lot of clips I'm just not putting in this video. There's, there's over 400 clips for this project and I can't edit them all. So at any rate, those creases you see in the blade there at the end, I'll circle them here. Those aren't delaminations. There's a defect in the die on my press and I had to go back and file that flat. We're going to chamfer the edges of our plug here. And this is something that Joshua Prince suggested. He gave me a lot of tips on doing this plug weld. All right, so according to Joshua Prince, um, you normally would TIG weld around the outsides here to seal it up and get an oxygen-free welding environment and fix it in place so it doesn't move while you're trying to weld it, uh, plug weld it. But I don't have a TIG welder, I have an arc welder, and there's no way I can put that final weld there. I would spend uh, forever trying to grind out the, the weld and the final product, and I wouldn't, <clears throat> this just isn't thick enough. I'd lose my thin 15 and 20 piece here, and I just do, it'd be all kinds of messy. So. As you saw when I was experimenting, I just used wire to hold the plug in place. And I'm gonna use that again here and, and just cross my fingers because it's, it's the best I can do. I lost the footage of the test plug weld, but I did the exact same thing here only with mild steel round and a mild steel flat bar. Much thanks to Joshua Prince. He really made this project possible. If you guys don't know him, you should find him on Instagram. He is a master of Damascus. What I settled on was just lots of flux and a uh, forge welding environment with as little oxygen as possible. I'm going to set this with a hammer and then we'll go to the press to really mush it flat. So far so good. It looks like we may have pulled this off. We're going to have to get this ground down, clean up the scale, and see if our weld is clean. I've hit this with a little bit of ferric chloride for an etch and it looks like it may be clean. This, this may have welded up real nice. I've thinned this out a bit. This little line here and down is the 15 and 20 edge that I have to work with. I don't want to really make that any thinner if I can help it. I've got this little divot here I'm going to have to grind out, but I think I have enough material um, to bring down the, the width of the decorated part of the blade. I think now I just got to work on uh, getting the hole drilled and the slot milled. <laughs> Alright guys, so here's the next conundrum. I don't want to quench or harden this any thinner than it is now because it just gets uh, predisposed to warping and things like that. I just don't want to mess with that. As much as possible which means while it's soft and this thick I'm gonna have to drill this hole and mill the slot and stuff and um, that's a lot of steel to mill through I can do it it's just gonna take a long time and I'll, but knowing me I'll lose 
a half a dozen bits getting that done. But <laughs> um, the question is, after it's milled and there's a hole in it, you know, from here to here, what? How does that work? Does it predispose things to warping more? You know, like. Yeah, the last thing we want is some warping, and I've got some more milling to do. So this went back in the heat treat oven for another anneal cycle. This project has a lot of issues with um, order of, of operations and which process comes first. And I, I've had a hard time putting that together. So what I usually do is I mark things up, look at things, go over it in my mind, sit on stuff for a day, make sure that I'm doing things in the right order, you know, with regards to heat treat, drilling, milling, all that stuff. Because there's no going back. There's like, there's probably 20 hours in this now. And if I mess something up, it's, it's all kaput. So there's just lots of measuring. Lots of me thinking things through, drilling test holes, and um, at any rate, I've decided that I'm going to face this a little bit, see if I can get it a little flatter. My surface grinder has some issues. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, but, you know, also my ability to mill stuff has a lot of issues. I'm just no good on a mill, so this isn't going to go incredibly well either. Ooh, well, that is just not great. Now, it's not going to be perfectly flat because I've only faced one side. I haven't faced the other side. That's got too thin a layer of 15 and 20 for me to do much with right now. I need to get this thing heat traded, then I'll come back and flatten that side. Here's my surface grinder. The wheel's got a lot of issues. The edges are sort of worn down, so it's not really actually even wide enough to accommodate my full iron, you know, in one pass. And then it's got nicks and gouges and things that just don't allow it to symmetrically flatten stuff. All right, so I had to do some measurements on our spatulator or whatever woodworkers call this thing. Three quarter inch diameter on the hole. This thing is uh, seven sixteenth wide, three and a quarter inch long, and I had to lay that out on this, and I had to use calipers. I had to use a calculator, and I had to do math. Math is a terrible thing, and you're saying, well, why did you just lay the blade thing on top of our blade thing and trace it out it's because the widths are different i've left myself room on in all dimensions in case something goes wrong in heat treat and and i'll clean it up after heat treat and bring everything to its final dimensions but this is our blades too wide so it's not like i can just set this on a table square everything up make everything perfectly parallel and then trace things out it's not it's not centered and uh i don't want to take that chance this particular end mill is just about done it's not going to do a whole lot more but uh, i've already burned through a couple on this project so i'm just trying to get everything to go as long as it can and yeah, my mill slot ended up a little bit wider so you know so much for math We're going to get this wrapped up in steel foil for a couple of normalization cycles in the heat treat oven before we do our quench. I'm going to take this right out of the oil and throw it between these two aluminum plates here and, and press it to help keep it straight. We don't want any warps, but unfortunately there's going to be a part hanging out the back when I apply pressure and that part did warp.
So I had to redo everything. I had to go back, put it in the forge, straighten it, renormalize it, and then try a different method for keeping it straight after the quench. This worked a lot better. I probably should have started here. Now, we already talked about the fact that my surface grinder seen here does not make things perfectly flat. In a lot of ways, it messes that up. But I've got a lot of material to remove here, and the easiest way to do that is on the surface grinder. So I went ahead and threw it on here. I'm going to flatten it, get it down closer to the final specification. And then I'll have to finish the flattening process very carefully on the ceramic platen by hand. Lots of hand sanding later, this looks a lot better. We're going to get it cleaned up with some acetone and into the etch. I really like how this turned out. Despite all the measuring and stuff, things didn't turn out all that symmetric, the plug is a little bit off center, but that's, you know, that's the best I could do. So we also made some efforts to keep the sides from bleeding through to each other, the two different patterns. And you can see there's some spots here on the nickel silver side where there is a little bit of bleed through right there in the middle and, and along that uh, left side, the top side there, but not enough to make a difference and nothing is gonna affect the cutting edge. So I think we're good to go there. Now on this side, there's a little, half crescent at the top around the plug weld of what looks like to be high carbon steel. And I don't know exactly what that is or how that got there. We ground off quite a bit of that side, so it shouldn't be that wire we used to bind it, which wasn't high carbon steel to begin with, but I don't know what it is. If you do, sound off below. Great project. My reach exceeded my grasp as usual, but I still pieced together something that I think is interesting. So go check out the other makers videos for this hand plane, you guys. Have a good one.